everyone and happy Tuesday. Uh, my name is Rachel and I am from Woodburn Corner and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about safety. Uh, don't stop the video. I know it's not the most glamorous subject but hear me out because I think that there are some things that you may not know about or that you might need reminding about or maybe you didn't even know that you need to be safe at all during uh, wood burning. So please stick around. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that I actually have a quick start guide to safety that you can find. It's just a one page little guide that you can find on my website and it is always free. So you can find that at woodburncorner.com um, under the principal guides and it is always free. So um, go and check that out, go print it off, hang it on your wall, have it nearby just to reference. Um, but let's let's just dive right in, yeah? Wood burning is a, is a very safe hobby. Um, but there are some things that you can do to keep yourself and those around you safer. So um, we're just going to cover those today. The first thing is you want to make sure that you work on a clean, hard surface. Don't work on your couch um, or your bed. Trust me from experience, um, you will burn a hole in something. Um, I have a couple holes in my couch. So learn from me. Don't burn on your couch. Get Work on a desk or a table, something hard. Uh, make sure it's cleaned off and that you have you know, everything that you need within reach. Um, the next thing that you wanna do is make sure that you never leave your tool uh, hot and unattended. Um, if, it's, if you're going to get up and walk away, turn it off and unplug it. Especially if you have children or pets at home, dogs, cats, um, you wanna make sure that you unplug it and that you turn it off because um, just for safety reasons. The other thing is that you wanna make sure that um, the wood that you're burning on is, uh, check the toxicity of it, because each wood type has its own toxicity levels. Um, but you really, you wanna make sure that your wood piece is dried, that it hasn't been finished in any sort of finish, um, so and that it's sanded smooth, and that it's like not chemically treated in any way, shape, or form. Um, just plain old wood is what you're looking for. Um, the other thing is uh, you want to make sure that you're using a mask every time. And this is something that I didn't know until I was wood burning for, gosh, almost two years before I even knew that masks were something that I should be wearing. Um, so I have a couple of su suggestions for you, and I will um, link to them so that you can just go and get whichever, whatever thing that will suit you best. Um, so there are a couple of different masks that I use, and um, they have different ratings. Um, this one is a P100, which means that it is uh, rated to uh, like, I think it's 99.7% of particles um, that are point, gosh, what is it? Point three, something like that. Anyways, <laughs> P100 is the best you can get. Um, N100 means that it does almost the same thing, but it doesn't work for any um, oil-based um, air particles. Um, and then the other one that I have is, um, so this is the one that I, this one is a 3M one and it just slides over your head like this. And this is a respirator. This one's a respirator. Um, this one is more of a mask. Um, and this one is, gosh, look at my hair. <laughs> this one is P95 rated. So this one's a little bit less and this one is 95% of particles it filters through. So, and then this one is nice because it just goes on like this and it has a Velcro. So it just attaches to the back and it's nice and easy. Nice and easy. I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> Anyways, these two masks are really great and I alternate between the two um, depending on what I'm working on. The other thing that you want to make sure that you have is either a fan that you put right next to your work as you're working, but you don't face it at your work, you actually face it away from your work. So it's picking up the smoke that you are creating and blowing it away from you. Um, what I actually use is a fume extractor. It looks like this. It's quite loud, but it has a fan that basically does the same thing where it pushes it away from my work. Um, but what it does is it sucks it, the air up through here, pushes it away, but it actually puts it through a little charcoal um, air filter. So it's a little bit better for the people around me and just my house. The other thing that I have right next to my desk is a um, air purifier that is like a room air purifier. So I make sure that I turn that on full blast whenever I am 
burning. So you want to have masks and fans and air purifiers and as much airflow as you can to make sure that you are not sitting in the smoke that you are creating. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure that you do is when you are burning, um, don't be right above it when you're burning because the smoke will go right into your eyes, right into your lungs, right into your face. Instead, if you actually tilt your head to the side of your work, you can still get that nice vantage point where you can really see what you're doing, but the smoke isn't rising into your face. Instead, it's rising next to you. So that's, that's one little trick as far as like how and how you are burning. Um, the other thing is you can use is just to be safe in general, um, if you are wanting to remove a tip that is hot, have a pair of like needle nose pliers nearby that you can use to just unscrew it and a little ceramic dish. I like to have just like a little one on my desk that I can throw hot nibs into and that really is um, helpful and just keeps your desk from, you know, getting burnt. Um, you also want to make sure that you have a very stable and secure docking station. So a place that when you need to rest your hand for a minute or put it down, um, that it has a nice secure spot where it can cool down um, or where you can you know, give your hand a rest while you're sitting there. Um, you should also, if you have kids in the house, teach them about wood burning, show them that it's, you know, what they need to avoid, what things they need to leave alone and not touch. Um, just so that they understand that it's a hot tool. You don't want a kid going over and grabbing it because they just didn't know. Um, and then always just follow the safety precautions that are listed in, in your um, wood burning tools uh, guide or um, the, just the wood burning tool manufacturer's safety instructions or recommendations. Just make sure you follow those too. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but I think that's about it. I just want to make sure that um, you all are aware of these, you know, little things because, um, I mean, wood burning is a very safe hobby, but there are things that you can do to make it safer. So, um, I hope that this was helpful to you. And, um, if there are any other videos that you want to see from me and hear from me, just drop me a comment and, um, I will see you next week for a uh, burnt tip Tuesday.